A wise man once said, Investor, let's go! But an even wiser man once said, Grand match, best take, baby, let's go! So yeah, um, it's true, I ended up going second. After months of not playing this deck. That is awesome. <laughs> All right, uh, let me talk about the matchups real quick. First matchup was against Flanderies, second matchup was against Invoked, third matchup was against Invoked, uh, fourth one was against Sword Soul, and the last one was against Sky Striker. Because of course it was. But now, let's jump into the deck. And just before you say it, here is a list of cards that I do not own that would totally go into the deck if I actually had them. Cool? Okay, let's start. We start th with 3 Grand Maju, I don't believe he needs any explanation. We continue with one of my favorite cards in the deck, 3 Necroface, because Necroface can single-handedly bring back your entire deck and unlock your place again, and it doesn't do that, it can always just hurt your opponent. Against the last game with Sky Strikers, I ended up banishing both three of them, and as a result I banished 15 cards from his deck meaning that he lost all his power and trap removal, plus his destiny fusion package. So yeah, this is one of my favorite cards in the deck, recovery for days. Next, our playmakers, we have three Bigfoot. Yeah, I know, I need a third one to complete the new playset, I love the new art. Either draw or pop, pretty good. We have three Thunderbird, my favorite danger out of all of them, by far. I need to get secret ones at some point. Either summon it and draw a card, or pop a set background. And the last one, one Danger Jackalope. Either summon it, or summon a danger from the deck. So, pretty good. Speaking of cards that you want to have in the graveyard, we have three Gizmek. Because he's just a level 8 that can just keep coming back by banishing 8. So, unlocks rank 8 plays. He can save you on your opponent's turn because he can activate from the hand or graveyard. He can actually pop one of your opponent's cards by banishing three of your extra deck face down. Not bad. Next, for going second cards, we have two Eater of Millions. I only play two because whenever I see him, usually he doesn't do much. And I prefer a lot of the other cards in the deck than him. He's still an amazing card, but not a card that I would like to have a three of. So that's all there is to it. Of course, the Pankratops, nothing to explain here, it's Pankratops. And now for going second stuff, we have two Dogoran, two Gadarla, two Gamma Seal, and two Slumber. This is the Kaiju package, and you want as many names as these because you banish a lot of stuff from the deck, so you want to have everything there just in case. So Slumber can be live. So yeah, that's all there is to it. Now for hand traps, obviously we have our Dimension Shifter, a card which is great in this format, except for Plunderies, but Plunderies is a special case either way. So Dimension Shifter, great card, you know it, you love it, or you hate it, depends on who you ask. Then of course we have the Ash, because it's the most generic hand trap at the moment, so yeah, nothing too special about that. And now to the best part of the deck, the main goddamn reason you actually play 60 cards. We have Extrude, Glyph, and 3 Golden Castle of Stormbird. If you do not play Grand Maju with Golden Castle, you are playing Maju wrong. I'm sorry. Here's how they work. You can discard Glyph to search the castle, and when he summons he pops a back row. Extrude can be summoned from either the hand or the deck by the effect of Golden Castle, and she can pop one card your opponent controls, Plus, she can attack twice on monsters, and when she kills a monster, she gives one monster on the field 400 attack. She's already 26, and a level 8, and a dark. The synergy is insane. And Golden Castle is one of the best goddamn field spells ever printed, true to its anime counterpart. It allows you to special summon these guys from deck. You get to banish 10 from the top of your deck every turn for cost, and whenever your opponent tries to attack, their monsters are destroyed, and they lose attack equal to half their attack. A lot of people do not remember this effect, it is stupid. Even in real life play, when people actually read your cards, a lot of times they get confused and they think it's once per turn. It is not. It is fucking amazing. This thing right here just destroyed my opponents. No back row was left unchecked. Love it. 
Now, continuing the field spell package, we have... <sighs> two Mystic Mine. Yeah, I know, I know. Don't kill me too much, guys. I, I hate playing this card because most of the time it stalls, but it also doesn't help me because I cannot go for game a lot of the time. It's just in a state where me and my opponent just stare at each other and just keep on playing. It is the reason why my second match ended up in a draw. It's just not good enough, too good not to play it. I, I do not have anything better than this, so yeah. And to wrap it up, we also have one Metaverse, one Set Rotation, and the one transfer Transformation? What? Terraforming. Set Rotation came up a lot, shockingly, in order for me to get my other field spell, and yeah, I mean, it's fine. I like it right now because I have three more ways to get into Golden Castle, which is the main playmaker of the deck in my opinion. But yeah, that's that's all I have to say about that. Next up, let's start with the draw power. We have three desires, best card in one of the best cards in the deck. Because not only you draw two, you also banish ten, which is good for your strategy. So awesome. Three allure, because most of your deck is dark, so it helps. Plus banishing, you know, not bad for you. And of course we have three trading, because again, a lot of your deck is level 8, so it helps. For powerful one-offs we have Raigeki and Monster Reborn. These two won me games. Actually, this one won me a lot of games. And Monster Reborn was clutch the very last game, where my opponent made DP, used his effect on my turn, and they just brought him back on my field. It was freaking awesome, I loved it. Next up, Super Poly at 3, because frankly it's a very good card, and whenever I have the option to play Super Poly, I will. However, in this format, I'm not sure it's very good. Granted, it was awesome against Invoked, but a lot of decks don't necessarily play in a way that Super Poly helps me. I ended up siding it out a lot of times, and... Yeah, it's one of the main cards that I would consider moving to the side in the future, but for now, in the main deck at, at 3, so that's all there is to it. And to round up the main deck with the two last cards, with a ratio that will probably make some of you want to kill me. One Forbidden Chalice and one Infinity Permanence. I was originally running two Chalice, but I have one Imperm with me, so I'm like, might as well play it instead of it. These are last minute changes that end up in the deck because I had two free slots and I'm like, okay, might as well add effect negation. So, yeah. I don't have my other imports with me right now. When I do, and when I actually change the deck, uh, I'm running three imports probably. Although Chalice is as flexible as well, it's debatable. So, yeah, I'll figure out the ratios, but that was enough for me to do stuff. So, yeah. Extra deck time. Well, it's pretty simple, we have one Unicorn, one Cerberus, and one Pentastag. Um, these almost never come up, and that's why I'm considering removing all the links in the deck, but whenever I don't have access to links, it feels wrong, so I still have them in here. Pentastag is probably the most important card in the deck, because the monster that it points to has piercing, so if you summon Grand Maju, you can have a massive monster that has piercing and just win from there, so that's pretty neat. Next up, the Super Poly targets with one uh, Dracostapelia, one Mud Dragon, and of course, Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. Um, pretty straightforward, this requires a Dark and a Fusion, this requires two Darks. This has the most flexible card out of all of them, because it requires monsters with the same attribute but different type. It's the one that you get to make most of the time nowadays, and yeah, they're pretty good. Starring Venom actually won me the game a couple of times. Now, let's move on to the rank 8 package, which is gonna see some changes, but whatever. One Giant Killer, one Dingirsu, and one number 23. So, let's talk about this. Number 15 is the one card that will probably come out of the deck, unfortunately, and will be replaced by Zeus when I actually get my hands on him. Dingirsu is an amazing card, which will probably be played a lot more once I have the Zeus. And number 23 is like such a weird card that is very good for absolutely no reason. It has 2000 attack, which is not a lot, but it can attack directly while it has an exist material. And when it does that, it kills one of your opponent's monsters. Also, whenever your opponent would activate an effect of a card, it's negated by detaching a material. 
This is a mandatory effect though, so that's something you have to keep in mind. I ended up making this guy a lot more than I expected. And I have to say that if I actually own number 90, I would not be playing him. But I have him and I'm playing him and he was actually pretty good. That's, that's the biggest surprise for me, he was actually pretty decent. And I really like that. Continuing the effect negation, we have number 38, because obviously we do. And then we have the best package of number 97 Draclubion and number 100 Numeron Dragon, because this is another OTK machine that you can access a lot more easily than Grand Maju sometimes. Unfortunately, didn't get to make it this time around, but this usually wins me games. And now, for the last three cards of the deck, uh, a small engine which actually came in clutch this time around, I have the Dogmatica hate of Nova, Mechaba, and Entis. It was so funny on my opponent's first turn to see him do Maximus, and I get to dump this two to the grave. And he just loses his Mechaba, and I summon my own. <laughs> his face was priceless. So, yeah, this is pretty cool if you know that you have face Dogmatica, but I'm not sure how many people still actually play Dogmatica, with Maximus even, so that's something to keep in mind for that. Very quickly having a look at the extra deck. Three Inspector Border. Uh, that's for going first, it never came up. So, yeah. Two Drone Lockbird. This came up a lot, honestly. And shockingly, I got to use it twice. And it's a really cool hand trap. I might consider meaning it. Plus I actually only have two copies with me right now. So yeah, there's that. And yeah, that's all I have to say about that. The third mine, just in case. Harpy's Feather Duster and two Twin Twisters, because back row, we don't like it. We do not like back row. Fuck your back row. Fuck you, Sky Strikers. Then we have Dimensional Fissure and Microcosmos for more banished hate. This is... this came up a couple of times, it's decent. Then, the biggest hate there is, there can be only one, the card that basically allowed me to kill Flanderis. It's insane, it is such a good card and, and I'm gonna keep citing this card as much as I can because it's really really good. And last card of the deck, just because I didn't have anything else to put in, I just played one solemn strike. So yeah. Now let's talk about some changes I wanna make in the deck. Like I said, Super Polo will probably come out and I want to replace it with Imperms. I've considered removing Monster Reborn in order to play 3 Chalice. Solemn will be changed to add a third hand trap in the deck, probably a third copy of Drawland Lockbird. The border will probably be removed and will be replaced by something like a Diddy Crow, because Diddy Crow is actually really good this format, removing stuff for Dogmatica, for Sky Striker, and a lot of other decks. And I'll probably remove the third mine for an Imperial Order, even though it actually hurts my deck as well, a lot. So that's just something I have to test out. I'm also considering adding Third Ride into the deck, because it is a very interesting card. Yeah, I'll have to test it out. But yeah, this has been my undefeated second place Grand Machu deck profile. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. You can roast me down in the comments and say I talk about all the bad ratios that I have and maybe while you're doing that give me a couple of tips on what you guys think is worth changing. So yeah, if you're interested in another deck profile, I made a Utopia one just recently, have a look, and I'm probably gonna make a more competitive version of it soon-ish. Actually, when I get back home and have access to my full collection. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!